Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I am Muhammad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about how to use a drop down background color change based on the selection. So here for example I have a drop down where it contains the status of a project for example or state of, a, of an order what we order on the courier for example. So if you click on any status change and update your record or as if you just want to make any changes here. For example, if I just select to do, in that case, it has to change the gray, gray color. So if I click on in process, then it is now changing into yellow color. And now if I click on completed, then it's now changing it into green color. So this is how we can use the conditional format. That's one way. Another option is like we have a multiple selections here, like we have multiple colors here. Just want to give an glimpse of that. So if you want to make any selection here, for example, if I select blue, then now it is changing up here blue here. Now if I select black, now it is showing up here white color. So we will do that here. And now if I click on yellow, it is now showing up here as yellow. And if I click on red, this is going showing on red orange color. I will also show you why it is showing up here the orange color. But this is how it works. Now how can we do that? So we are going to discuss that in this video. So if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. So as per YouTube analytics, I have seen that almost 90% of my viewers are not my subscribers. That's really a hard feeling about that. So you are coming and watching my videos, but you are not subscribing it. It really helps me a lot in order to boost my confidence and also to reach many other people if you subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you for doing so if you are doing it now. Now coming back to the subject. So for here, I have a drop down where it's a, basically a combo box where we can see combo box filter color 2 and here on the data source property, I have just given here the hard coded value. Let me zoom in here. This is too big looks like. So let me 125 is fine. Yeah, this looks good. Okay. So now if I click on this drop down, I, I can see it here to do in process and completed. We just give it a space here and now it's going to give me the option whenever I run this one, I can see to do in process and completed options here. Now as a part of background thing, what we need to do on the properties of each and every control what we have here, we have multiple things and here we need to select here the fill property. So when I click on the fill property, we need to do our logic here. So usually it will be white whenever you create combo box, but by default, uh, you need to make the changes here. So I'm using a switch statement here, switch statement combo box underscore two, which is the name of this combo box dot selected dot value. If the selected value is equal to to do, I just add a space there. So I'm adding a space also here. So to do in the sense, I need to use the color dot gray. And if it is an in process, I want to mention that color dot yellow. And if it is completed, then it should be color dot green. So these are the three layers I am setting up here. Now there may be chances that when you initially starting up an order or any project, then there will be no status of that. So in that case, by default, it has to be white. So that's the code which is showing up here. Or also you can just type here color dot white here. As simple as that. So when it's do so, then it's going to behave as per our input here. So now if I click on run this application here by using alt key on my keyboard, it's going to run within this environment. I don't need to click on the play button. So if I click here, then I can see I have selected a value of completed. That's why it is showing up here green. And now if I click on in process, it is showing up here in yellow. And now if I select to do, then it's showing up here in gray color. So if I again select here and uncheck everything, I mean the remove that option and now click on somewhere else. Now it is showing up here white ball, which is nothing is selected here. That's what it is showing up here. Now this is one use case that you have a value of static thing coming up here on the drop down. What if something which is coming up here dynamically and based on that you need to add the value. So in that case, I have another drop down combo box here where I'm taking up here distinct product color from the product table and then sorting this value by ascending order. That's what it is doing up here. So I'm directly connecting to the product table which is coming up from the data source. I made a multiple videos on the Power Apps. If you haven't seen that, just go and check out my previous videos so that you can understand how you can get the data from different data sources. Now coming back here, so I have a product table. I'm taking the distinct color from the product table 
and then sorting the value in ascending order. Ascending is by default, so we don't need to mention that additionally here. So now, if I click on this one, you can see all these options, black, blue, gray kind of thing. And here it is changing color as per my selection here. So now, what we need to do again, we need to go to the field properties of this control. That's right. So if I click on this one, now you can see I'm also using the same switch statement, combo box filter one, that is this combo box selected that value. If it is a black, B L A C K. so I added one more one value here. That's the reason it is showing a white during the demo. So black, blue, gray, red, silver, I have just part coded the value here. And then I can see this, I have given the name of RGBA here, which is red, green, blue, and then transparency level. So as the transparency level is set to 0.5, which is 50%, that's the reason the red is showing up here in kind of orange color. So now if I change the transparency into nothing here, like zero, in that case, I can see zero also here. If I change this transparency into one, which is opaque, then now it is showing up here as red color itself. That's how it looks like. Now if I think about, I said you need to make these things in a dynamic way. So dynamic way, which is not possible here because this color dot something which you are mentioning it here, it's a different one. Either you can do, you need to create a collection and based on the collection, you need to use this value. And from there, you need to specify the RGBA color and that value you can bring up here. So by doing that logic, you can also work on that way. So this is how you can use the dynamic way and static way of getting your data from a different sources and then apply your logic here in the field section in order to conditionally change the background color of your drop down or combo bags. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, just click on the big thumbs up button. If you're new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure you turn on the notification on your devices. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.